and welcome to Millinery Part 2. Today we'll talk about how to finish your hat and layering your different pieces together to either do a bias bound edge or a way where you fold your edges under and slip stitch them together. Also look at our class videos or recorded Zoom sessions for a little bit more information on finishing techniques for embellishment. So things like pleating, gathering, ruching, um, and different ways to embellish and decorate your hat. Because the shape is one thing, but how you choose to create the silhouette and the decorative elements of each of your fascinators will really give it personality. Be it something subtle that is more about layering of veiling and uh, gathered flowers, or something that has a little bit more of a silhouette nature to it built from feathers. Also check out our two subsequent videos that will cover the idea of how to prep your horse hair as well as, just for funsies, how to prep and utilize continuous bias. So I'll be showing you a few different ways to refinish your fascinators and this first way is to have seam allowances on both your fabric lining and on your fashion fabric for the top side of your hat. Um, so in this case you can see that we have our covered base with our baby flannel and bias tape. We have our fashion fabric with our marked line, about a half inch of seam allowance, and then our thread marked uh, fold line so that way we could see it from the right side. And then our lining piece that also has our marked line, our pre-notched seam allowance, and our thread marking on that side as well. This first step, I'll place my top fabric on my hat base and then start to lay it in place. And I'll just pin my center. Once I get my thread marked lines, you see how I can get them to hit the edge and just kind of stretch over. Once I get them to do that and it's positioned properly, then I'll throw a pin into the center. And I can kind of bend the buckram a little bit to get in there. And then I'll throw a few more pins in, just to kind of help hold it in place. So if you start with your four corners and kind of stretch across the hat a little bit, it's not to ruin the grain of the fabric, it's just to make sure that you don't push too much into one corner, into one edge. Kind of smooth your, your fabric into place. So my next step will be to diagonally baste this into place. If I were to set this fabric right now, I would then have to fold my, bi my uh, lining piece into place as well. And to be honest, what I'm hoping to do is place my lining, wrap it around the edge, and then when I fold my top fabric into place, I'll be able to roll that ever so slightly beyond the curve of the hat, and then making sure that I have enough of the seam allowance of my lining for them to be stitched into. But if I do that first, when I go to put all of my decorations on, then I might stitch through to my lining layer. So I'll show you guys a technique that will allow you to place things and then put your lining on last once you've gotten all your decoration on. So using, in this case, a knotted piece of silamide, I'm going to stitch up, stitch diagonally baste my hat about three quarters of an inch or a half inch above that fold line. I wanna have enough room to be able to fold my seam allowance in. And so I'll run a quick diagonal baste just to help hold all of my layers in place. finish this off with one little back stitch to help hold it in place. Depending on how much decoration you're planning to do, if you do this diagonal baste in a thread that matches your hat color, there's a chance that it might blend in once you get your decorations in place. For me, I wanted it to be visible, so I chose to do it in white. So now that you have your fashion fabric basted into place, We'll hold before putting on our, our uh, lining and we'll get our decorations in place. So depending on your design choices, you might choose to either do uh, color blocked sections where you can fold on another layer of fabric and then you can slip stitch that edge. You might cho choose to move, work with ribbons. You might choose to decorate with rosettes. Uh, but remember, part of the goal of this project is to utilize the techniques that you learned in your fabric modification. So think about the role that ruching or gathering or pleating 
or any of those things can play in this uh, design process. Ah, there we go, all decorated. So now, once everything is stitched in place, we'll take our lining piece, so in this case, I cut mine so that the medallion sits right in the center. And so making sure that as you pin your edges, this is where that thread tracing comes in really handy. I'm gonna peel away my top layer and I'll pin this in place so that I can wrap around the edge. And this is why we don't necessarily clip as much as we can all the way to the um, stitch line. Because if you clip too far, then you won't be able to actually wrap it around the edge. So now I'm taking my pieces and I'm making sure that I'm keeping it centered and as I fold my edges under, I'm trying not to stretch it. If I stretch too much, then I lose the concave nature of the hat. So I'm pulling it lightly around the buckram and I'll just pin it in place. Starting with my two ends, going to my other corners. And starting with those four points first. Otherwise, you see how it'll stretch funny if you start on one side and work your way around? What's really important here is that I'm actually wrapping around the edge of that millinery wire. And then making sure you don't pull it so tight. I find it a bit difficult to actually pin into this, so you can try and see if you can get it to come all the way back through. You don't want to deform your buckram too much, but if you pin your center, that'll help keep your um, lining from sliding around on you. Now, if I were just to baste my lining in place that eventually came out, once I stitch my fashion fabric to it, there'd be nothing holding my fabrics together to the base. So this next step is an important one if you're finishing your hat this way, where you're not doing a bias bound edge. So instead of basting anything, I'm actually going to whip stitch my lining fabric in place. So yes, my top fabric is getting in my way and I could kind of peel it out, but I have one option of either stitching really close to my edge and kind of whipping around the edge, making sure that when I go to do my top layer, that I have enough fabric there to hide it. Or what I can do is I can whip stitch my lining layers into place above on the top side of it. What was important about this one was that I made sure not to clip my seam allowance so close to my stitching line that it would roll over the edge. And so I have to be mindful of little areas like this where it's really, really close. So when I go to start folding down the, uh, my fashion fabric, I'll need to make sure that I can find and kind of cover these little areas where the clips come a bit closer to the stitching line. Now that I have my lining basted in place, I'm going to start prepping my top layer. So using my thread marked line as a guide, 
I'm going to start folding my edge under and pinning it in place while trying to roll my stitch line just around the edge. Ideally, from the side view, we're just seeing the pink, we're not seeing the gold. But really, it's my clipping that might hinder me from being able to do that. So sometimes you have to make the design choice of, do you have it so that your line exposes a little bit of your lining? Have you clipped neatly enough to do that? Or do you have to roll just a little bit so that you see just a touch of gold? So testing some of your spots out, you can pin through your fashion fabric and back again to help hold it in place. But I'll test on various parts of my hat and as I need to, I'll tuck in any little um, weirdnesses, for lack of a better word. And so you see, this is really about finagling and working your way in quarters. So I'll go, oops, I didn't go quite across from each other, um, but I'll split that difference and I'll fold in the next section. So it's not about working around the hat because the fabric will stretch unevenly depending on which grain you're on around the circle or the teardrop. I'm gonna do it in little sections tucking in my seam allowance as I go and trying to find little shredded bits like that and then just tucking them under. And we're really relying on that whip stitch that we did on our lining layer to make sure that we're not pulling our fabric too tight. And at one point my basted my thread basting for my lining layer might get in my way, so I'll go ahead and pull that out since I no longer need that line. And then you find your center. I made it pretty messy on the gold right here, so I might use some extra pins just to kind of either my fingers to hold that nicely into place. And then I might pin a little bit more with my pink layer to help organize those little bits. What I'm trying to avoid is um, making my fabrics pucker or having any excess all kind of coalesce into one area. So you see how if I'm not careful, I could push this over to make a bubble. So that's why you go for your centers and then your centers of centers, because that can help disperse when your fabric stretches a little bit. and we've established that I am a pin monster, I admit it, um, but I like to make sure that my fabric is nice and neat as I go around the edge. And there are little kind of movements and undulances to my folded edge, and so as I stitch, I'll try to pinch my fabric and make sure that I'm keeping it nice and straight while I go. Um, so I will kind of endeavor to even out some of that while I'm working. So because I have basted in um, silamide, I'm just gonna pull that out so that I don't get confused about the stitch that I'm making and the, the basting stitch that I had in there. Uh, but now that I'm pinned in place, it's no longer necessary. So the least visible stitch will be a slip stitch or a ladder stitch. So starting in the center back, so I'm feeling for my little wires, it's always nice to begin and end in the back because then as you get more comfortable and your stitches get, get better, it becomes a bit more visible as you work your way around. So I'm gonna hide my knot under my layers of fabric. I'm stitching in white so that you guys can see, but obviously if you have the means, making sure that you can match your thread to either one of your two sides, or if you have different colors, um, trying to make sure that you can find something that will blend into the two of them. So starting my ladder stitch, I'm going to stitch straight through one folded edge, and this will be a little bit of a visible stitch, just to start, just to do a double lock to start my work, because sometimes those knots and threads come undone. And then immediately where I've come out of one side of the fabric, I will go into the other folded side. So just going slowly because 
Um, you don't want to be grabbing on pins. As mentioned, I am a pin monster, so the ratio of me snagging a pin with my thread is very high. So I just try to make sure to be mindful of what my thread is doing while I'm working. But as I go, you'll see that I kind of smooth in any weirdnesses and pinch it. So to continue with my ladder stitch, where I come out on one fold, I will immediately go into the other layer. And so I'm always working kind of in 90 degree angles in the folded edge of my top layer or in my lining layer immediately across from it. So the same can happen with a slip stitch. We'll I'll work in the fold on one side, um, but because a slip stitch is necessary for when you're going to the outside of something, often a ladder stitch is just a bit more even and a bit more secure while you're working because you're not focusing on doing a small pick stitch. You're doing equal stitch stitches on either side. And so I'm trying to keep it to the quarter inch, maybe a little bit smaller. You can see that where I come out of that gold layer, I'll immediately jump over and go into the pink. And then I remove my pins as I come up on them, slowly lowering the likelihood of snagging them with my thread. And sometimes I might go through to the bias tape layer and that's okay, you'll feel just a different tension when you put your needle through. That's not the worst, it gives you a bit more security, You're just, but you're just aiming to go through your lining layer with this stitch. Then to finish, we'll do a double locking stitch, drop our needle, lose it a little bit, find it again, and then before you trim, if you go back into your fabric and travel away that hidden quarter inch, that'll make it a much cleaner finish. And while it is very finagly, and sometimes you get these kind of uneven edges, one hopes that from the stage, they're not as noticeable. Um, but this is the technique that would allow you to just use your lining and your fashion fabric to finish off your hat. And that's how we finish with folding our edges under and hand stitching them together. So while this technique does have its time and place in the finishing world, it can be rather fiddlesome. So let's see a different version in which we cut our fabric to the edge of our fascinator and then finish it with a bias bound edge. Now for the second version that I'll show you, this is done with a bias bound edge. So in this case, I have bias tape that matches my fashion fabric. 
And then I have my fashion fabric that's been cut to the shape of my pattern, no seam allowance. And the same for my lining as well. So much like we did with the first version, we'll take our fashion fabric and we'll place it on top and we'll just line up the cut edges. If they don't match exactly, exactly, that's okay because those will disappear within the bias edge uh, of the, the bias tape. So I'll start the same way where I'll pin in the center so I don't lose um, focus. And then I will pin perpendicularly on my first four points, smoothing my fabric as I go. You might stretch it a little bit, but if you stretch too hard, then you might notice that you're losing some of the curve in your buckram. So tug a little bit just to make sure that it lines up with the edges and watch your grain. This one actually has a nice striation, so you can actually see the grid of the fabric and then you can tell if you're actually warping it off to the side. So making sure that you can smooth your fabric into place. Once you're pinned, you can go ahead and baste this layer on. When you do so, make sure that you're going pretty close to your millinery wire. If you travel too far into the body of your hat, then actually it'll become it's possibly too visible once you start to do your bias tape. So I'm calling this a, a baste. It could be a running stitch. I'm not doing a diagonal baste because I don't actually want my threads to travel that far away from my outer edge. So just don't make, make sure that it's not too big of a baste. Otherwise you'll get, start to see some rippling in your fabric. The baste needs to be small enough to help hold everything in place. And if you keep snagging onto your pins, one technique is to push the heads in as far as you can, because then they're less likely to snag on your thread if they have not gone off the edge of the surface. And because this won't be the last time this fabric gets stitched, I'm actually just going to secure it with a back stitch rather than a double locking stitch. Because the basting of the lining will come next or after the decorations and then the bias tape. So technically this is enough to hold this in place for now. If you need to, you can also trim any little hangers on, but if your fabric is thin enough, then there's no harm in kind of rolling it over that edge. But if it's a thicker fabric, more often than not, you want to grade this edge by not having something that can be folded over. Because the next step would be embellishment, that's why we're gonna wait on putting on the lining because we don't want all of those stitches to come through to the inside. So I'm going to embellish and decorate this first and then we'll talk about the lining and the bias tape. Ah, there we go, all decorated. So now I can take my lining piece and I can put that right side of the fabric out. And similar as before, I will pin the center of my lining to make sure that I don't set it off. And I'll just check my ends. And lightly bend my buckram and then put it back into place. And then just like my fashion fabric, I'll pin it into place, making sure that I don't stretch it too hard. Once that's pinned, then I can go ahead and baste it just like I did my top layer. 
finish this layer off as well with another little back stitch. Now that we have our lining and our fashion fabric based it on and our embellishments already done, next we'll finish off with our bias tape. So I made two inch wide bias um, that I have pre-swirled or pre-curved on the iron and I also ironed it in half. So this is that same double ply or double fold that we used on the base layer in the white. Um, but in this case when I ironed it I tried my best to keep actually my edges lined up. The reason why the other bias has that little bit of an underlap is to allow for machine stitching for when you stitch at the ditch on the top side However, even though you can't see the bottom side, you, that underhang knows that you can catch it. So that's why they're offset. But because we'll be doing a hand stitch and I'll be ladder stitching this on, I've tried to make sure that they're all lined up when I press them in place. Now to apply your bias tape, this first edge that I'm going to do will um, be underneath. So I'm not gonna worry about folding under that edge. Right here, this folded edge Normally, if it's going to be a finished one, then we would pre-fold before we go and finish. But just like we did on that first version of the hat covering, it's always easier to cover something when you have a little bit of um, underlap. So right now I'm starting it basically where my wires meet. So that way when I finish, I can overlap that and have my center back be about a quarter inch beyond where this tape is. So centering my fold my crease right on that edge. I'm going to pin both sides. I tend to pin straight through the top layer and then straight through the bottom layer. You can also pin just straight down, but then you get a lot of pokey bits when you go to sew your hat. But at least this one you can do both sides with one pin. So you can alternate or you can pin one way and then baste and then sew. Sometimes if the hat is really cumbersome, then I'll try that. So right now, stretching my bias, you see how it, you can see those um, fibers move? I'm gonna stretch a little bit to kind of hug it to the curve of the hat, but that pre kind of swirling or curving on the iron or on the uh, straight hair straightener will help with that. So if you pin out, you're more likely to stab yourself, but it's a little bit easier to get into your fabrics. And then just walk your way around the hat. So I might do a two inch section and then go back. Or you can go in smaller increments. The reason why I pin out sometimes is that I like that counter pressure of being able to kind of push the fabric down into place. And then I just suck it up later when I stab myself. As you approach the end, then you'll overshoot and give yourself enough to go at least a quarter inch past plus a half inch more for seam allowance. You can always trim down more afterwards if you need to. And so I'll move these pins out of the way. get one last set done on this side. And then before I finish this end, I'll fold under. Just be careful because you see how it stretches? You don't want to deform your bias tape. 
And the same on this underside. This side see here, you see how it's flaring? So sometimes you need just to tuck in your ends or just be mindful of them. So often I will pin the ends of my bias tape. So right now I'm gonna pin this end first because that'll be our visible corner. So I'll pin straight through here. But can you see how I have those little flanges sticking out right here? So now I'll go in and I'll tuck those down. And this is where that pin hit your fabric and pivot can be helpful, but you don't want to just misshape or deform. And then we'll do the same down here. I'll give it a stretch. Make sure that my bias tape ends line up. And then I'll clean up some of these little ripples. What's helpful is that if you've kept that, that creased edge right on the edge, you have about a half inch evenly on the top and the bottom side while you're stitching. Uh, while you're pinning rather. So then that way when I go to stitch this next, I can go straight up and down through the hat in order to get my bias tape put on in one stitch rather than dealing with the top and then the bottom separately.
And that's what self-biasing can do for finishing. And there you have it. Now with your finishing done and your embellishments on, your last step is to do your horsehair. So make sure to upload pictures of each of your steps onto the Google Drive. I'd like to see an up and down version of your base layer, as well as a finished version of your decorated hat, um, and then one with your horsehair on as well. And so upload those in time for our final and make sure that when you come to our final next Wednesday, you have your hat ready and your tea brewed. See you then. Beep <laughs>